Mm. Yeah, and look, and that's why obviously we we went with Gio and Sammy uh, to support Evan in that sense, and um, the form they're in, playing for our clubs, uh, the confidence that they have, and obviously uh, the connections they have with the team as well was uh, was a big factor. No, Evan, Evan would have been on the penalties. I think that would have been just a case of uh, maybe Robbie trying that one of you another know, protecting the the taker type of scenario. But uh, it was just just unfortunate. Ev had a little slip um, just before just before he knocked it, so uh, would have put it off. But as it look, uh, a youngster stepping up like that in front, it uh, shows obviously the courage he has, and he didn't let him affect him. He, he knocked into the centre backs as soon as he could again, got his confidence going and. It's uh, it's one of those things. He was unlucky with one. He got himself in a great position in the second half as well. How we started. Um, that's what we talked about at half-time. Quickly about the reset. Really go at Belgium as quick as we could. Worked a nice little kick-off. Um, and it was a really great ball from Robbie. And uh, it was unlucky. Probably just a touch too high. But if Ev might have timed it a little bit better. But a touch too high as well. He was unlucky with it. It was a well-worked move. Yeah, no, it was big because you think of the two wing backs, Seamus and Robbie. Um, that's what I kind of almost thought about straight away when I saw the potential for our three centre backs that are playing in the Premier League. Um, that they have that experience around them to keep encouraging, keep pushing. Um, I thought, look, that was never going to be an issue for me because I know the type of players and people that they are. Gavin Kinney, please. Hi, John. Hi, Gavin. What did you say to Evan afterwards? Because this is a long goal run now, and obviously. No, it's look it's straightforward. He'll be uh, he'll be ready to go um, as as soon as we need him to. It's it's one of those things. I spoke about it before the game in terms of he'll have another spell five six years down the line of uh, a couple of months without a goal. It happens with top strikers, and he'll uh, as soon as he gets on the goal trail again, he'll be he'll be back on a run again. Uh, we're not performance because it's easier job hmm. than from up against Yeah. No. Look, as I mentioned. Uh, any, any of the players coming back in that haven't been around, Seamus obviously it's almost a year to the to the time he was back around the squad and uh, you're kind of thinking is it we'll have a little word with him halfway through the second half just to see how he was in terms of uh, ready to go fitness if we were going to need to have a little reshuffle with the subs um, but look the words that came back were very positive and it wasn't surprising but we just needed to double check but um, look that's why he was uh, picked to play and obviously the captain of the team. No, look, it's it's yeah, look, it's a frustrating one because yeah, you appreciate Belgium had a, <clears throat> a decent bit of possession, but we kind of felt beforehand that we didn't mind that in the sense because we knew the damage we could create again against them on the break, um, and if you take those chances when they arrived in the game, I think that even opens up Belgium a little bit more for us and we can exploit that even more. So, um, frustrating one in that sense, but yeah, look, you're playing Belgium in Dublin, you take a clean sheet, but a little bit disappointed in the end too. And the last couple of years, uh, John, Ireland have enjoyed a lot of possession in these games, but haven't really done much with it. Today it was sort of reverting back a little bit more to compact defending and counter-attacking. Do you think that's more suited to this? It's a it's a mix. No, not previously at all. It's just a mix in the, the current situation in terms of where the players are at at their clubs, um, where the opposition that you're going to face at a certain time. It's just for the here and now. It's not about a previous uh, scenario or anything. This is just for the here and now. What we felt would be most beneficial for us today to get a win. Yeah, look, uh, um, <clears throat> look. I've obviously I know Josh very well, and I know Will very well in terms of uh, where when he came into the 21s, uh, worked with him at Stoke as well, um, and a few times. Obviously, he's done it for Southampton too. Um, that sixth position or lower pivots in midfield. Um, that that's the connection we just felt that was going to be a key in terms of protecting the team. But also a huge chance for it to, to us to exploit on the counter attack with our passing ability 
to connect the teams, either short passing, combining themselves, different angles to find the pockets of Sammy and uh, and Chio. That was a key thing for me. That's what we were looking for. Um, and I thought the two of them, because we knew uh, physicality in terms of Belgium have some big boys in there too, that we knew we'd have to be up against them, battle away, nick the ball away, press when we could. And the two of them are really aggressive on that front too. Yeah, that was the key. Look, in terms of that's the domination I kind of want from our centre backs to be pressing into midfield, pressing players high up the pitch, being able, to, excuse me, being able to swing round into a four with the wing backs pushed high like a winger. That the the, the centre backs can be aggressive like that because they've got the attributes and the ability to be aggressive, stepping into midfield if it might be where the player's gone, and I think that's a, a key asset for the team going forward, and um, the quality and aggression. And pace and power of our centre backs—it's—it's uh, it's crucial for us. Thank you.